See, when I first came in Brooklyn from Italy, we land around here. And it was pretty rough for me. This is a pretty bad neighborhood, and I couldn't speak English, so kids used to pick on me all the time. And he's getting into a lot of fights because of that. And one night, we went to a block party, and kids always picking on me all the time. There was this wise guy that really, you know, we got in, so we went to fight. So cops came and, and took us, and they, and this used to be a prison. And I thought they were taking me there. Instead, they took me in this place here, PAL. Upstairs is a gym, a boxing gym. And that's where I started boxing. Born in Barry, Italy, now residing in Brooklyn, New York, wearing red and white trunks, weighing in at 161 pounds even, the hottest fighter in the middleweight division today, Vito Antuofelmo. Moyer making good use of his left jab. Moyer beaten to the punch, paid for it. Half a minute to go on the round. The best punch of the fight by Anderson. Moyer holds on. Thirty seconds to go in the fight. Moyer gets a new cut beside the left eye. Final round is over. Talk to each other briefly. Moyer back to his corner. Vito went a fermo to his. And he did last the 10 rounds without getting knocked out. That's yes. Danny Moyer. Yes, and then the remarkable thing about Anta Fermo is he got cut in the fifth round, not the sixth, the fifth. I said the sixth earlier. A very bad cut around the right eye and uh, it never bled again, Floyd, that I remember. He sustained a later cut around the left. Apparently, that Artie Curley is quite a cut man. Do you know him? Uh, I've heard of him. Uh, I've yeah. heard he was a very good cut man. It's very important to have a good cut man in the corner uh, because a cut like that could continuously bleed throughout the fight with the referee or the doctor eventually stopping it. Right. Here's the decision. The winner on a unanimous decision, beat the Antuofelmo. Round four, scheduled 10 round bout between Vito Antuofelmo and the green trunk, Eugene Cyclone Hart of Philadelphia in the black. Hart has had Antifermo in trouble. The scoring so far by the judges and the referee, one round apiece and one round even. Personally, I would have given two rounds to Hart. But my opinion is unofficial. Digging the body again. Can't hear the 
from a bulldog. came on just a little bit. Let's see if he can keep up the pace. What he's got to do to win this fight, I think, is knock out Benny Frisco. This is going to be a tough order. So only one round to go, less than a round. Frisco not in any kind of trouble. A tribute to the corner of Vito Antifermo, though he was able to go the full route in this fight because of those cuts around his eyes. 
Sorry now with both hands to the head. Benny Briscoe has sampled the punches of Carlos Monzon, Rodrigo Valdez, two champions, some of the best middleweights in the business. And I'm sure that the punches that uh, Vito is rolling off him right now, he's had uh, a lot tougher ones hit him. Vito is scoring. Vito is the one who is punching now. Grisco is tired, no question about it. He's just defending himself right now. Vito, Vito here in Madison Square Garden. Vito's got to go in and get him. Benny is tired. Vito's standing outside, not punching. Now he moves in, throws a little bit of a flurry. But he's got to go in and try to knock him out. He's got to land his best punch if he can. He's got to throw a lot of punches to pull this out. There's only a minute left in the round. where the smarts come in by Benny Briscoe. Notice, as I told you before, he moves his body to dodge punches. Very seldom does he dance around the ring or try to use up the ring. And he took a punch on the break and Harold Bowen looked at him but didn't say anything. Sneaky punch by Benny Briscoe. 20 seconds to go in the round.
going to try to take a big up clock. He's still strong, though. He's still powerful. He's still throwing punches in their landing. But the fight is almost over. That's it. He's able to hit down the middle of the fight. He's still fighting. A real good fight. Totally tossing that bit of work in front of him. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your decision. Judge Tony Castellano scores the fight. Seven rounds, antifermo. Three rounds, classic. Referee Georgie Coyle scores the fight. Seven rounds, antifermo. Three rounds, classic. Judge Harold Letterman scores the fight. Six rounds at the Fermo. Four rounds Claston. The winner by unanimous decision. Unanimous decision winner is the Fermo. And they're starting to throw some things into the ring here. And the winner by unanimous decision, Vito and the Fermo. Mike Callacy almost breathing a sigh of relief. This is the 10th and final scheduled round, Don. Callacy wearing the green trunks and the red blood. And Vito <laughs> Antifermo wearing the red trunks. Vito's eye, which was cut in the first round, has somehow or other the blood has been stemmed and he's not been bleeding from it lately, but you never can tell. As I said, the last round time is running out when the bout could be stopped on a cut. It can be stopped any time, but at least from the promo standpoint, it has not gotten worse. Halisey's is bad. And Halisey is very pecked around the right eye. And I think the final bell will be a welcome sound to Mike. It has just been a long workout for Antifermo. He rates the shot against Hugo Coro, no question about that. And he'll give Toro plenty of trouble with his style. And the Fermo, one of the best of the world's middleweights. Moving it here. Vito's ear that was cut a couple of rounds ago, Don, is no longer a problem. I thought you were going to say it's no longer there. <laughs> oh, it's there. <laughs> Not sure if Mike's is. We'll check. Solid punches, Antifermo is hitting harder as the bout wears on. With half of this round gone. The bout winding its way down now. Billy Connolly, the referee. It's really no contest. And I'm not gonna pretend that it is. A minute to go in the fight. With this bout obviously won, he has to know it. Vito is by no means hanging back, trying to take it easy in the final seconds. It's hard to remember, Don, when uh, Halsey scored a couple of punches in a row. I don't remember the last one he scored. 30 seconds left in the fight. Time running out now. 15 seconds. Uh, 
There will not be a knockout. We've passed the 10-second mark. It's almost over. Vito, uh, the first round you seemed a little cautious, but after that, it was all yours. You're gonna get a lift here. That's your dad? Yeah, it's my dad. You know just by the feet, stop, right? Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How about putting him down? Put him down for a minute. I want to ask him a question, all right? Now, he's got to be proud of you. You've yes, got to be happy is. because you came through this one, and it means the title shot. Thank you very much. Yes, it is. I seen Carlo uh, Valdez today. That looked pretty good. Oh, it looks pretty strong, but I got enough confidence uh, uh, that I'm going to beat him. Now, you seem to handle Mike Hallisey very well. Were there any yeah, surprises Mike, he gave you? Yes, he, uh, he did. He, uh, he surprised me that he, he could take a punch. Matter of fact, he, uh, he was never knocked out. He fought some of the best middleweights weights in the world. He was never knocked out. So I'm not... Uh, I'm a little bit surprised because I, I've been hitting hard pretty uh, lately, but I couldn't knock this guy out. Even though you didn't knock him out, you've got to be happy with your performance, right? Yes, I am. Uh, I think I should be I should be a little bit more strong next time when I fight Carl. Well, Vito, good luck on that title shot. Thank you. I just you. want to say hello to my wife and my baby and all the boys uh, on Coca-Cola, Jericho, Long Island. All right, we've Thank got you your dad. we got the whole family covered. Yep. Again, well done. So a cop gave a kid a break. He became a fine amateur fighter. And then in 1974 against the former world champion, Denny Moyer, a convincing victory. He was really on his way. But there were tough opponents to be met even after the victory over Denny Moyer. There was, for instance, Cyclone Hart, the TKO artist. And does Anna Fermo have a weakness? Yes, in the fourth round. As you look at it there, you'll see the weakness. A tendency to cut. Look, around the eyes. But what are his trademarks, really? Stamina. Guts. And in the fifth round, he came back to do away with Cyclone Hawk. After that, there was to come perhaps the biggest victory of his career against the tough man, Benny Briscoe. And it was this victory over Briscoe in early 78 that led to his title shot against Caro today. This is the way he prepares himself. Running, 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 as inevitably fighters do in the early morning. Could be a beach in Maine, but no. The Brooklyn kid runs right here at Coney Island. Look at the familiar landmarks. After that, another familiar landmark. The gym of Bobby Gleason, a block away from the garden. And the sparring, the buildup of the very stamina that now is the earmark of Vito Anafermo. And of course, there is the speed of hands on the bag, getting himself ready for what will be his biggest shot in the history of his boxing life. Boxing so far has been good to Vito Anafermo. This proves it. A home in one of the better residential areas of Brooklyn. His wife expecting its second child shortly, his little daughter Lauren. So as there is happiness there where most you would want it. And still there is the dream, the dream that impels him on to become the middleweight champion of the world. And so he's back at it every morning until today. So a look at Vito Antofermo up close and personal. Earlier, I had a chance to talk briefly with Vito about his chances in tonight's fight. You're absolutely convinced you can beat him. He is a clever, skilled, experienced boxer. Definitely. We've seen him against uh, some good fighters, and he did beat him. Uh, but I think I got the right tools to beat him. What tools? Strength. I last longer. And I'm just as fast as him, or maybe even faster. He fought guys that slow, like Rodrigo Valdez. Will you knock him out? Well, that I can't predict. If I could predict that, I could predict anything. If a knockout comes, it will come natural. 
Good luck to you. Thank you very much, Al. Don Lookalike, you just saw the manager of Taro exhorting him as we come to round 14 because the fight has become, in my score, unexpectedly close. I make correction. Did I say 14? I meant 15. And a Fermo has come on very strongly on the basis of sheer stamina. Look at that. That's a lot of skill, huh? Mangana admonishing Anna Fermo. Once in the seventh round, he took a point away from Anna Fermo for Buddy, Marvin Hagler, who will be the next challenger against the winner of this bout. Made a brief appearance at our microphone. Spoke very candidly about the quality or absence thereof of this fight. 15th and final round. Well, the headlock was there. One could more easily score this fight on the basis of a wrestling match. Except they can't bend the shoulders. Minute and a half, little less left in the final round. A good right by Anna Firma. A good, clean right. Finally, it came through in the 15th round. manhandling the opponent willfully and the opponent unable to do anything about it we are coming down to the final 30 seconds amazing how Caro has given up fighting in the last four rounds. Where did all the skills go? As for Anna Fermo, no skills, but just falling, manhandling, occasionally getting in some blows. Stick and move, you didn't see it in this fight. Fight is about to end. Now cheering for Anna Fermo. Hear them singing Vito, Vito, or chanting, I should say. However, it should be a close score. And as I get ready to talk with Marvin Hagler, who, as I told you, TKO'd Alberto Cabrero earlier this evening in the eighth round. Marvin, now you're getting a chance to watch the world middleweight champion in action against Santa Fermo, the number two ranked WBA contender, number five WBC. Honestly, what's your view of what you can do to either fighter? Well, first of all, I want to know, is this a championship fight? It don't look that way to me. Both of them look like a bunch of amateurs. Uh, Coral more or less uh, look, wants to be a pretty boy in there. But I think what I would have to do is put the pressure more on Coral, make him fight. Enter Formio, I have to let him eat my right jab or straight left hand all night long. You're going to be the champion. I'm going to be the champion. I finally, they finally recognized me as the number one contender by WBA and WBC. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, can we open up this stick mic, please? Talking to my producer, Bobby Goodrich, as we await the decision. Marvin, what did you just say to me? Marvin I can't Hadley. wait, Howard. I <laughs> can't wait. And the Formio, I think I have more stamina than what he has and much more speed. Quo is a setback fighter. You have to stay on him and make him work. I believe Antifomio might have pulled this fight off. He may have in the last four or five rounds. Well, there we are on camera, and we are still awaiting the decision. And Antifomio's corner is obviously convinced, Marvin, that they have pulled this fight off because of that rally in the last four to five rounds. Different how and who I fought anyway. I kept my mind neutral. Whoever win this fight, they have to deal with me next anyway. 
And like I said, I believe that I'm the true champion, and I'll show these people what a champion is. They kept me away from the title for a long time, and I believe that come September, you will have a new champion. Okay, now let's await the decision, Marvin. Under any circumstances, good luck to you. People in Annapurmo's corner are lifting their arms and proclaim victory. You know, it's amazing. I have done so many fights in Monaco. In one even, with Rune Arledge, the president of ABC News and Sports, sitting next to me. And always, there are these unseemly delays in getting the decision. And one can't but wonder why. <laughs> Okay, there it is, finally. Well, apparently Vito Antifermo has won the middleweight championship of the world based upon the great comeback in the last four or five rounds. I repeat, in perfect candor, not great in terms of boxing skills, but great in terms of courage and offense. Now, as they get in for the instructions, there is the tail of the tape. No real age differential, minor height differential, weight exactly the same, important reach differential favoring hack. So be it. The two of them eyeing one another in the middle of the ring. That's Marvin Hagler, whom you just looked at. The 11th round coming up. The fight has grown, I think, suspiciously close. Antifermo coming on in the last three rounds. Hagler not throwing as much left. And there is your evidence. It is Antifermo now who is making the fight, pacing, fighting his fight. And Hagler's stamina is to be watched closely. This is the 11th round, and at stake, the World Middleweight Championship. Marvin trying to use the ring. Steady foot move. Notice, incidentally, how slick he is when he turns to the left lead, to the orthodox fight. The left jab is very quick. And in the main, he has fought with the right lead in the South Boston. Incidentally, when Benitez goes against Leonard, watch for the same thing. Wilfred likes to convert to the South style. Especially when he's fighting on the ropes. Right there, Anna Fermo scored heavily with the left. And the crowd responds, they can sense it. Anna Fermo with another good left. Hagler beginning to respond himself. The lead he had built up in this fight. Think was hurt. Hurt or tired. Anna Fermo uses that sawed off torso of his. So effective. This thing has become a brawl in this round. Excessive lefts. Now back to the right. And Antifermo hurt. So at the end of the round, we're not going to a commercial. We'll follow Antifermo again. 
All right, we're back live. Sports Pavilion, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. 13th round action underway. Pattern of the fight. Change from the way it was in the beginning. Most ringside people have Hagler ahead, but the question is, by what margin? Because Anna Fermo has come on ever since the eighth round. Hagler re-established himself in the 11th. The 12th round could have gone either way. round the world middleweight title at stake both fighters from time to time evidencing their fatigue it's been a brawling thing the way Antifermo fights and it's taken its toll on the hey, more stylish up. performer Hack. Anafermo getting in. Look at that head. See where he puts that head as he has throughout the fight. Lay that strength of that upper body all over the other man. Right there, he's doing it again. And on the break, he got in a short right. He got in another good straight right. Oh, he caught half. Ropes. A terrible danger spot for Marvin Hagler when he's pinioned against those ropes. Now he's trying to re-establish movement. Use the ring. And a firmo beckoning to him. Come on. The old Ali style. And the crowd is on its feet and responding. And a good round for Vito and Affermo, quite clearly. Now, winding down. And we'll return with more boxing action after this from our local station. Cut over the eye. And this is it. The final round. They touch gloves. Standing there now, toe to toe. Agla with the with the right and the left that constituted the clean of blows. Vito answering right back. Agla missing. The crowd has gotten its money's worth for this one. Vito, you saw him score. Agla's right eye. Miss. Agla coming right back, though. That's the beauty of this fight. Every time. And it's been this way from the eighth round on. You think the fighter is going to control the pace and the action. His way, it will just as suddenly switch. One thing is clear. Oh! Vito rocked by a Hagla uppercut. left eye a bloody mess now Agla using the uppercut then ripping Antifermo with clean sharp blows and Antifermo doesn't go down and Hagla a little bit arm and leg weary he, he look at that not pretty is it there is nothing stylish about Vito effectiveness one minute left to go in the fight Vito coming back 
now. This will not, I don't think, be the easiest fight in the world to score. Two very tired men, but Hagler now throwing the leather and with the clean of blows. And a firm old feels that he has won it. His arms up raised. He feels his last seven rounds, the way he fought, entitled him to the decision. You folks have seen it. You decide. And then let's hear the call. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. Judge Dalby Shirley scores 144, 142, and to a fermo. <laughs> Judge Dwayne Ford scores 145, 141, Marvin Hegler. One and one. Let's see how this thing goes. Judge Hal Miller scores 143, Hegler. 143 and to affirmo. The decision is a draw. It's a draw. And to affirmo is still. Vito retains the title. Good Lord, they called it a draw. Hagler absolutely disgusted. Well, you can understand his emotions, but you've got to give it to that man. He did come on strongly. He changed, as I said, the pace and flow of the contest. You could see it happening from the eighth round on. And so, he retains, he retains his middleweight championship of the world. And right with me here and now is the still middleweight champion of the world. First of all, Vito, congratulations. You're about as tough and game a cookie as there is in the ring. Secondly, your fights are now assuming a pattern. The other guy builds up a lead in the early going. You have the stamina and come on in the late. It's true, but uh, uh, I, I, a week ago I was going to pull out of this fight. I had, I had very bad cold. As you see, I was coughing in the ring. But uh, thank God on my win, I came on strong on the end, like I expected to. Yeah. But not like I, I really wanted to. You know? But uh, in the future, I hope to give him a rematch because he's a good fighter. And I guess he deserves a rematch in the future. Well, let's go back to your disclosure. Because nobody really knew that a week ago you were contemplating pulling out of this fight. Yeah, uh, it's true. You know, a lot of people underestimate me. Uh, like you underestimated me in, uh, in a fight against Coro. Coro is a very shrewd guy. Matter of fact, I find Coro much difficult than, than this guy. But this guy, I guess he was a little tougher than Coro. But Coro is, is a lot difficult. I would rather fight this guy uh, more than I would than I would fight than I would fight Coro. That's another interesting point too. Did you sense that you had begun to change the pace and the flow and the control of the fight from about the eighth round on? Yes, I uh, because they told me that I was losing the fight up to the eighth round. So they said, you got to get moving. Uh, but my wind wasn't as good as I wanted I wanted to be. But I, I guess I pulled it out. You sure did. At least you got enough to retain your Thank title. You. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you very much. <laughs> Take care. And so, the story from... Say, yes, one second. I want to say thanks to my trainer. Freddie Brown does good cuts. 
Goes good job on the cousin corner and Panama Lewis to get me in shape for this fight and my manager Tony Carrione and also Ray okay. Rica. All right, now I have to move it on. You understand. Congratulations to you all, especially you, Freddie Brown. So that's the picture. Vito Antifermo gets the draw, pulls out the draw with his late round rally and retains his world middleweight crown.